Hello, DEFCON 18. How are we doing? Well, and hopefully y'all will be able to tolerate three hours of Arduino goodness since uh, the last two presentations had some things to do with Arduino-based uh, development environments as well. My particular talk is on what I like to call the programmable hid USB keyboard mouse dongle for pin testing. And if you want more information... All right, how about this? All right, guys, hopefully I'll keep, remember to keep this this close so y'all can hear me wave in the back especially. If you want more information on this project, it's up on that very Google index friendly uh, URL but very untyping friendly. Uh, the slides that are currently on your CD are rather old, but I will have these slides posted on my website relatively shortly. First of all, a few special thanks. Thanks for Tenacity Solutions for, for helping finance the project and for helping get me here. Uh, Kentucky Anna ISSA for also helping to get me here and of course PJRC for um, giving me some uh, extra promotional materials and sending me some free hardware to uh, start work on this project. If anybody wants any of their little flyers on how the TNC is built and what the pinout is, come see me afterwards. First of all, a little bit about me. My name is Adrian Crenshaw. I run a website called irongeek.com. Thank you. Um, also a regular on the InfoSec Daily Podcast, isdpodcast.com. I'm on there usually every Thursday. Uh, slogan for my website is lifting dumbbells in the gym, supporting them at work. And I have an interest in InfoSec education. One of my main goals is basically become a professor of sorts that goes around and teaches people about computer security. Now, I don't know everything. I'm just a geek of extra time on my hands. While some people might be sitting around playing solitaire, I like to, well, sit around and play desktop tower defense and uh, write security articles, make security videos, do research, and so forth. Now, there's many things which I'm a noob on, but I have this theory that it takes a noob to teach a noob sometimes. For instance, people who have been doing uh, computer security or any technical subject for years and years and years might take for granted what the student would know. For instance, uh, I found this most of all when I was teaching a C106 class, which is like intro to computing. And I saw someone grab a mouse like this and try to use it. And I never thought to explain to them how to use a mouse. I also saw this one lady, she learned how to actually use the mouse backwards. And she got proficient with it. So if it works for her, that's all fine and good. <laughs> but, you know, for instance, <laughs> explaining, um, you might take for granted if you're really familiar with C that people would automatically know they have to initialize whatever variables they create. You know, stuff like that. So sometimes it takes a noob to teach a noob, which is one of the things my website just specialize in. First of all, before I really get onto the meat of this talk, I want to give you a little bit of story about how I got started on this project. Uh, I was giving a fireside talk called, uh, I think it's skinny, ba skinny baiting and funny pots, basically with how to screw with attackers while I was at um, ShmooCon this year. I was one of the fireside talks. And uh, I was given a speaker's gift and it was this little thing called a phantom key stroker. You plug it in, it does annoying stuff like type random characters, move the mouse around, jiggles it, uh, turns caps lock on and off. Just things to annoy. It was meant to be a prank. But it started me a thinking, what could I do if I could program this bad boy? So I started looking around for something to program. But the first thing I did was I was um, there and there was a couple other people roaming around ShmooCon with me. Well, I'd known that uh, Darren Kitchen from Hack5 uh, he'd done a lot of work with um, U3 thumb drives, which you plug in and one part of the uh, drive looks like a CD and it, you can have, uh, use the auto run functionality to automatically fire off a payload. Well, a lot of people now are getting smart to that and they're turning off auto run. So I was thinking, well, what if I could do this uh, little keyboard dongle to plug it in and it automatically starts sending keystrokes to do much the same thing. So I, I brought the idea to Darren and he was kind of took me aside and said, uh, Aiden, we're kind of already working on that. But then they were going to uh, send me some uh, demo stuff to look at. But I got impatient, so I started looking around for how to build one myself. And actually, we've since we came across the exact same chip, uh, the Tensi, which I'll talk more about in a second. Also, Robin Wood is involved in the project. I don't know if you all know Robin Wood, but he does a lot of really cool coding projects. Uh, great guy. I definitely go out and check his work. And if you ever get a chance to see some of the work he's done on um, using uh, social networks for botnet command and control, interesting stuff. 
There are little things called the rubber ducky and they actually have a forum out there for extra information. If you want more information on using these kind of devices on Macintoshes, definitely a good place to go. Okay. Playing with the idea. For those that didn't want to wait for them to get a product out, I decided to, you know, for those that, as I like to say, go ugly early, I decided to put out some notes on how to basically build one of these devices that will act as a keyboard mouse that you can program. Uh, free notes. I'm new to microcontrollers. I suck at soldering. Or at least I did a few months ago. I've gotten better. Or as I used to say, I used to, when I soldered, it was like, like an epileptic alcoholic with DTs soldering with an aluminum baseball bat. I'm not particularly, like I said, I'm still not great. Uh, this guy named Scott Malton, you may be seeing some of his talks. I was uh, in a fries with him and I was like, well, I need to get better at soldering. I kind of suck. It doesn't look good. The joints are bad. And he, and he was like showing me all this really expensive equipment to buy. And if you're a guy like him who replaces, you know, hard drive uh, controller boards and do surface mount soldering, you really need that stuff. But I'm dirt cheap. So, you know, I'm, I went with what I could find. Oh, I apparently suck at rotary tools as you'll see in some of my uh, packaging pictures. Okay. Let's go into why you might want a programmable head USB keyboard dongle. First of all, it's likely going to be able to type a lot faster than you can without errors. So, you know, instead of going up behind someone's machine and start typing, you can just like plug this in surreptitiously in the back of the machine and have it do the commands you want to like maybe add an account or whatnot. It works even if U3 auto run is turned off. Most everybody, pretty much every operating systems I played with, if you plug in a head device, that's human interface device, like a keyboard or mouse, it automatically installs and goes. It draws a lot less attention, like I was saying before, than sitting down in front of the terminal to type in your commands. You just plug it in and once it, uh, it enumerates all the USB devices, it installs it, it's good to go. Also, you can set it to go off on a timer. For instance, if I, um, had a student professor I knew, you know, and uh, I could get access to the machine during the day. I could plug this in. I know in eight hours it's going to be logged in. Have it do something in eight hours. Just set it off to go on a timer. Or a better example what would be just if you know the admin's going to be in and you're on a pen, physical pen test with permission, uh, and you know the admin's going to be logged into the box in eight hours. Plug this thing in the back. Have it set to go off in eight hours. Do your thing. Add your account and do what you need to do. Or a ton of other different payloads. And I'm going to show up some payloads here in a bit. Just use your imagination on all the different ways that you could use one of these sorts of devices. Okay. What sort of commands would you want to use? Well, I've already suggested have it automatically add a user for you. That could be useful. Uh, run any old program. For instance, you can't get auto run to work, but you can use this along with some storage built into the device to fire off any old script or exe that you have off of the uh, storage. No problem. So basically you get around the whole auto run being disabled and still have very much like U3 thumb, thumb drive functionality. Uh, copy files to your thumb drive for later retrieval. It's like uh, I have a payload, you plug it in and it copies everything on the desktop to onboard storage so that you can parse that stuff, look at it later, you possibly dump password hashes or whatnot. Uh, look at the uh, current U3 payloads that are out there for further ideas on what you can do with this tech. Upload local files and if you don't want to use onboard storage, you could script it to where it automatically opens up a web browser and goes out to your site and starts uploading certain files off the system. Uh, download and install apps, fairly obvious. And something you can do is something kind of akin to cross-site request forgery but not quite. Essentially how many people here uh, when they hit a website say, yes, remember me, stay logged in? You lying bastards. I have no idea why that just closed on me. <laughs> Hold on just a second, too. We got some small issues. Uh, not that I recall. We have blue screen. Well, most of my payloads for this are written for Windows, and quite frankly, usually when I'm going to be targeting a system, it's going to be a Windows system. So 
That's why it's all targeting Windows. So I guess in the meantime, I'll do my best karaoke while I'm up here waiting for my machine to restart. <laughs> now see, I've had problems with live demos before, but generally the slides work. But this has even happened to Bill Gates, so you know. Don't worry, I'll have this functional very shortly. Give some order to bore. You can bring it on up here, that's okay. By the way, they were talking a little bit ago about uh, fuzzing USB drivers and so forth. I'm pretty sure that that's part of what happened to me there. Uh, we you see a blue screen like that, you gotta wonder if a USB device is causing that, if you can get that kind of memory corruption to cause it to crash, can you cause it to do something else? That's something we'll have to do a little bit more looking into later. But anyway, cross-site request forgery. You all might be familiar with that where you basically put some code on a website that automatically make a request on a different website that the person stayed logged in for because they just chose, yeah, save this cookie and I want to stay logged into this service. So this isn't quite cross-site request forgery but essentially you leave the device in and if you know they stay logged into Facebook or their bank account or whatnot, have it automatically make a transaction on that particular service to do whatever little evil task your heart desires. And my heart desires a whole lot of evil tasks. All right, a few other ideas I had. Embed a hub and storage for better packaging. And essentially, this mouse I had plugged in a second ago, I think everybody saw it iterating through different colors. Essentially, I've embedded in one of my little Tensi devices that's programmed to act as a keyboard and mouse, uh, onboard storage and a hub. So it's all in one unit. You plug it in and now everything functions. And I can give this to someone as a gift, say, hey, here's this really cool mouse that changes colors back and forth whenever you use it. And actually, let me show that real quick. And essentially, it just sits there and iterates through the colors. But I'll show the payload it does here in a bit. I'd show it now, but I'm afraid of another blue screen. Okay. Uh, leave it around, and some people have mentioned this before, I believe they called it road apples. Uh, leave it around as a thumb drive package, hoping unsuspecting users will plug it in. Uh, Trojan hardware. Use a timer or a sensor and embed it in a gift device. Like there's also these little uh, USB uh, QB toys. Uh, maybe you all have seen something called a NAS, I think it's NASPAG. It's like a little bunny rabbit that glows different colors if you have email or some message waiting for you. So, what is that? The humping dogs, yes. The dogs that hump your USB port, they, they uh, make your USB port literally. Yes, those would be another good example of cubicle toys. But think of all the USB devices you have laying around that have extra space in them already. As you can see, I jammed one in a mouse. Uh, I think my buddy Dave jammed one in a keyboard. So there's all sorts of possibilities there. You can have it wake up, mount the onboard storage, and uh, have the program do whatever you want. If it happens to fake a blue screen of dev so it covers up what it's doing in the background, Come on, most people are just going to figure it's one of those Windows things. Actually, now that I think about it, I could use that as an excuse for why I just blue screened. <laughs> Damn, I should have thought about that earlier in the slides. All right. Also, I've been thinking about doing a default BIOS password brute forcing. Basically, you plug it in and it just iterates for all the common BIOS passwords if someone happens to have a password on their BIOS on a boot up. Okay, I needed a name for this project. Uh, first thing that came up was the idea of Minty Pwn. The very first packaging I did for this was an Altoids 10. No, I wasn't the guy who had the problem at the uh, TSA, and I'm hoping I don't when I go back home either. Uh, 
But I was going to put in an Altoids.